and welcome to Solar Power International 2016 here in Las Vegas. I'm Jonathan Gifford, the editor-in-chief of PV Magazine. Now, with a show this size, there is always a host of announcements, a host of new products, and, and many of them are in the power electronics space and also in the balance of systems, BOS. So to help take us through some of these major announcements, I'm joined by Cormac Gilligan. He's a senior researcher with IHS Market. Now, what are some of the things that have really caught your eye over the last three days? Yeah, so we've seen lots of big announcements from some of the major suppliers at the show. Uh, in particular, we've seen uh, further announcements on the 1500 volt trend, uh, both in the central inverter and the string inverter market. Uh, in terms of the residential and small commercial market, we've seen lots of announcements from the leading microinverter and power optimizers uh, suppliers, especially in terms of partnerships with module suppliers, uh, looking at the smart module and AC module market. And then in terms of the balance of system or the BOS, uh, single access trackers are still as popular as ever, particularly in the United States. Uh, and we've seen lots of the suppliers continue to internationalize, uh, release new products, bringing a level of new uh, intelligence and sophistication, uh, and we're in, especially in terms of uh, the O&M aspect of the market. Uh, and we're looking forward to really covering these topics later. Okay, let's check out some of them. Okay. And our first stop in this whirlwind tour here at SPI is Yaskawa Selectra Solar, where we've got 1500 volts, but on the string level, these have been introduced at the show, not only from Yaskawa, but a number of brands. What's behind this move? Yeah, so we've seen recently uh, quite a lot of central inverter suppliers being really active in this 1500 volt market over the last two years or so. But increasingly, we're seeing quite a lot of uh, major players in the string inverter market, such as Huawei, Sungro, Yaskawa Selectria, uh, releasing 1500 volt string inverters. Uh, and the main reason behind this is really to uh, provide an alternative uh, in the utility scale market and especially in the United States, which is obviously a, a booming market. And the advantages of going going with the string level, how does that work out? Yeah, so what we're seeing increasingly is that uh, a lot of major suppliers are considering using string inverters, uh, in particular because it uh, removes the need for a specialist engineer, uh, which can be quite an expensive uh, solution at the O&M uh, part of the uh, market. Uh, and increasingly, we've seen a lot of suppliers uh, doing major projects uh, outside of uh, the United States, in China, in Europe, and this trend now is gradually being adopted in the United States. Well, how big are we talking, both in terms of the inverter itself and, and what kind of deployment, what, what size of utility scale? Yeah, so one of the main things that you're seeing at the show is that we're seeing uh, considerably bigger string inverters, uh, anything from 60 kilowatt up to 100 kilowatt, uh, in particular being used with 1500 volts. Uh, also, in terms of the project size, uh, in the past it could have been 20 megawatts, which was the limit, but we've seen lots of case studies recently where the, the market has moved into even 100 megawatts of using string inverters, and we anticipate that this will occur uh, in the United States in the near future. Well, central inverters, though, aren't going to go away, and they're also being supplied in some quite innovative formats on the 1500 volt uh, level. Let's go and check some of those out now. Okay. Stop number two, we've talked about 1500 volts on the string level, now we're moving to the utility scale. Now what kind of suppliers and what, what have been some of the announcements on new products here at SPI? Yeah, so we've seen, uh, obviously in the past, quite a lot of suppliers at the central inverter scale looking at uh, 1500 volts. Uh, at the show we've seen quite a number of new suppliers uh, moving into this space and, and making new announcements. Uh, Schneider Electric, GE, ABB. Uh, and of recent, uh, Schneider, for example, has released a 2 megawatt uh, central inverter, 1500 volts, really aimed at the utility scale market. And uh, what is different? What is Schneider bringing to the table with this new unit? Yeah, so obviously uh, there still remains the uh, considerations regarding capital expenditure and price. Um, but the, the, the clever suppliers and the intelligence comes from looking not only at that part of the jigsaw, but also looking at the OPEX side. So uh, Schneider Electric are looking at things like uh, cloud, using this to host a lot of the data points uh, so that the uh, suppliers monitoring the market can really take care of it from an asset management point of view. Uh, using sensors which can diagnose if there's issues with parts uh, not only if they're uh, uh, being worn down more quickly but also slower and therefore really really make sure that the asset is performing and ensure that the asset lasts for 30 years which is really key when you're dealing with central inverters at utility scale. And also impact O&M I imagine as well. Yeah so this is 
certainly a really hot topic right now and a lot of the uh, sophistication and a lot of the asset managers are really looking at this uh, not only at the upfront for five years but also for the lifetime of a project for 20 years and even beyond when they may sell the asset so having a bankable supplier having a supplier that can uh, do di diagnostics remotely uh, across the world is key and, and Schneider Electric is certainly making big moves in this space. Well you mentioned right at the top uh, tracking and tracking is always a huge theme single access tracking in particular right here in the USA let's take a look at some of the new products. Okay. Now it's stop number three on our whirlwind tour. Every time I come to the US I'm struck by just how much tracking there is here. What's been going on this year at SPI? Yeah, so we've seen increasingly a number of suppliers continuing to innovate and expand into the single access tracker market. And the United States is certainly a major market. So we're seeing lots of the domestic suppliers, uh, such as Sunlink, Game Change Solar, uh, ArrayTech, uh, and Next Tracker continuing to innovate and bring new product to the market. Well, we're here at Sunlink now. What is happening in terms of innovation? What are, what are some of the things that the trackers, uh, tracker suppliers are adding to their product portfolio? Yeah, so, so similar to the inverter market where we've seen a, a new level of intelligence and sophistication coming to the market, uh, single access trackers are continuing to do that. So one of the things that they're doing is adding uh, software as a service uh, and adding uh, a new level of detail uh, and this is really important particularly from a asset management point of view understanding how the single access tracker is working, if there's any issues, uh, fault detection particularly if the motors are uh, misperforming and basically the purpose of this is to ensure that the energy harvest and all the benefits of single access trackers are, are taken from the, from the product. Well we're here at Sunlink now, it's again linking into this major theme of O&M. Yeah, so it's certainly a hot topic at the show, uh, certainly from uh, ensuring that the uh, project lasts for the length of time for 20 years, uh, ensuring that it's working correctly and I think you're going to see continuing innovation in the space on the software and the IoT and the cloud uh, in the future. Well, we've talked a lot about utility scale. We can't ignore the DG, the distributed generation market. Let's go there on our fourth and final stop. Sure. And our final stop brings us up onto the rooftop, um, where we've seen a number of announcements, collaborations announced during this SPI. Cormac, um, what, what have you seen from, uh, this is the module level power electronics space. Yeah, so we've seen lots of uh, new announcements in this space amongst the microinverters and power optimizer suppliers, such as Enphase, SolarEdge, Maxim and Tygo. Uh, we've certainly seen a lots of innovation, uh, in particular amongst these suppliers and bringing new products to the market. And why are the companies coming together and collaborating in this way? Yeah, so we've seen, uh, in particular, we've seen a lot of partnerships, uh, particularly amongst uh, these uh, module level power electronics suppliers, especially with module suppliers. Uh, and they're doing this for a number of reasons. Uh, in particular, they're doing it to uh, increase the speed of installation, uh, improve the reliability, make sure it's installed in the factory, and ensure quality. Uh, and also, in tandem with this, they're bringing their next generation products, such as the uh, microinverters, uh, NV phase, for example, bringing their, their sixth generation to the market uh, and bringing a new solution. Well, we're here at Enphase um, looking at microinverters. We've, we've looked at inverters on the string level at 1500 volts, the utility scale, um, and, and also the tracking market, which you can't ignore here in the US. Looking at all of that together, Cormac, what's, what, what's one of your key takeouts? Yeah, so I think the, the key thing is that obviously we're seeing uh, system costs as in total decrease. Uh, we've seen innovation in terms of partnerships uh, to work not just individually, but collectively across the supply chain in order to make solar more competitive as a source of generation. I think in the longer term, uh, as we look to the future where subsidies, incentives, and in the USA, tax credits being gradually removed, it really leaves solar in a really great place to be more competitive and lead to a bright future. Well, that's certainly a positive note to end on. Um, Cormac Gilligan from IHS Market, thanks so much for your time and for this tour. I'm Jonathan Gifford, the Editor-in-Chief of PV Magazine Global, here at the 12th Solar Power International Show in Las Vegas.